will you work to maintain adequate funding for research, extension, and conservation programs that have that provide important service to the community? I'd just like to say the master settlement agreement is an end resident agreement. You would think the money would run out, but as long as people smoke cigarettes, the agreement is in place. I can't believe the cigarette companies even agreed to that. But as long as people smoke, the uh, master settlement agreement is in effect. It's in effect at around about approximately 40 million and 40 million coming to the loans. 40 million and 40 million biannual budget stays in the state. Jeff, I just want to tell you, I was there, I don't know if you was there, 20 years ago when this thing ended. I reported on the House floor after a floor fight for a couple of hours. I voted to send the locals 100% of the money. And one of the, and I hate to bring this up, and the Farm Bureau Board wasn't on the Farm Bureau at that time of the board, 22 years ago. But I got a letter from them, and they wanted me to switch my vote. And I said, why? I called the president. He's not here tonight. That was that president then. And I says, why well, switch my vote? They say it's too political on the local level, and they want to keep the money in Franklin. I said, what do you think it is up here? Give them all that money up there for uh, to spend. So what it did, it went from the Senate. We beat them at 100 percent. When it come back, it was at 50 percent. We got in the back room. Talk. Some of us want the final for the hundred. I want the final for the hundred percent. They said, no, we better take the fifth. They'll take us into a conference committee, and we will not get done. And that's what we did. We agreed with 50 percent to come back to local problems. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lawson, a large portion of our citizens are unemployed. As mayor of Barber, what are your plans to provide a quality, a quality job? I want to work with whomever I need to work with in order to get jobs for industry, stuff in our county, uh, into our city. Those jobs, we do have to have jobs. The city can't run on just the local people in it and run on uh, the government. Uh, the government helps all the time. They need jobs. They need people to work. People needs to work. I want to work with whoever that representative is, the governor, whoever I need to go to work with. I want to go there to work with them instead of them coming to me. I want to go, uh, I know there's people out there that, uh, uh, that works with different companies to get, to get jobs in here. That's the people I'm going to talk to. I'm going to talk to the ones that, uh, that comes, uh, Come around and says is the best place to explore the industry to go to, whether it's a factory, whether it's a uh, uh, whatever. They get in. Restaurants uh, is good. They're a local hand job, most of them are, but they're good to have. Every little bit helps. But we need something to keep our children here, us here, and everyone else want to come here. The jobs will do that. So my plan is basically just to work with the uh, local government, whoever the uh, executive is, whoever the representative is, whoever I need to go to work with, and that's what I'm going to do. I'll try my best to get the industry in here for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a couple of questions from our audience, and the first one is to our state house representative, Bryce. Do you support sales taxes on professionals and trades? I do not. My husband, as I said, is a bricklayer. I can't even imagine him trying to charge somebody 6% on a brick and house. And when he first heard about it on the news, he was like, you've got to be kidding me. And a service is something that is a personal act by someone else to you. I don't do 
public services sh should be taxed. Do you support I'm not for no more taxes? Do you support sales taxes on professionals and trade? I'm not for no more taxes. Our next question from the audience is for our county judge executives. From your past endeavors, how do you plan on using those experiences to help you run this office? Like I say, I've got uh, 32 years of business experience. Uh, I took and managed it uh, rather well. Well off the head. I want to apply my knowledge and business skills to that. But most of it comes into management. I'm not for higher taxes. I think we need to manage and facilitate better use of the taxes right now. Also, I plan on seeking additional monies to uh, state and federal agencies that we're working with right now. And as well as that, I want to uh, work with all the agencies within Knox County, all the, the Marble City, and everyone. We've got to be unified to grow together. We've got, sitting in here, we're in a good location. Within a one day's drive of Barberville, Kentucky, there's 72 million people that we pass through here. If we just got a small fraction of that, uh, we, can, we can build stuff here, components, send to factories in Nashville. Cincinnati, Ohio, whatever. And we've got the workforce here. What's happening right now, there are good workforces that are here going to other communities and work. When they do that, they're doing their commerce there, they're doing their shopping, banking, and stuff there. They're paying occupational tax in that community. We need that money in our community here working with us and well in making the uh, life better for Thank you, sir. Mr. Warren, from your past endeavors, how do you plan on using those experiences to help you run this office? Well, first of all, if, uh, if you've talked to me on the street, if you've seen a yard sign or a billboard or anything uh, concerning my campaign, you know that my passion, first and foremost, is jobs for our We've got to have jobs if we don't want to go away and die on the line. Now, that having been said, uh, I spent two plus years with the Eastern Kentucky Concentrated Employment Program. I was our Supreme Court Project Coordinator. My job, as that entire agency's job, is to bring jobs and industry into the mountain counties. So, I, first of all, I know the people at the U.S. Department of Labor, I know who to talk to, I know the doors to go through, uh, but most importantly, uh, in the last couple of months, I have talked with leaders all over southeastern Kentucky, I've talked with uh, leaders at the SOAR, uh, I've talked with county judges, and I've talked with mayoral candidates, and they all agree one thing, you cannot attract jobs or industry to your county unless you're prepared for jobs and industry. And my opponent indicates, uh, and I talk wholeheartedly agree that we have a lot of workforce that's outside the county now working. Uh, we do need to bring that back home. But in order to do that, we've got to bring jobs and industry in. Uh, we, we don't have an industrial authority. And a really, uh, a well kept secret, but if you have an industrial authority in your county, city utilities, public utilities can donate to you dollar for dollar and get credited on their taxes. Simply put, they can give you $500,000 to develop your industrial authority, and they get a $500,000 rate from the state of Kentucky on taxes. It's a win-win for them. They're investing in the community. They're hopefully investing in new customers. But we need we need to ready prep sites. We need to ready our workforce so that we can bring Thank you all very much. Again, we appreciate all of the candidates spending time with us this evening and we would like to offer each of you all
three minutes for your closing comments. As I said earlier, the reason I'm running for mayor is mainly because of our children and our grandchildren. I want to bring jobs in their area, to our area so people won't have to leave and find these bad jobs unless they just want to. I would like to get a movie theater or something here for the children to go to for, so we adults can go to and enjoy a movie. Uh, instead of having to go to do like four minutes. Even Piper, well, they got a little bit of theater up there, and it stays very busy. I want to work with whoever I need to, no matter who it is, to bring the jobs here. Because the town can't survive if it's for the people in it. They need to bring more people, more industry. We need to uh, have the tax base in order to hire more police officers, hire more uh, street department workers, hire more. Jobs. We have eight clubs, police department. I've tried on them about there for a long time. They are probably the best trained this time that I ever met. And that includes a lot of the time when I was there. The street department runs efficiently. Everyone down there works hard and all hires to get. They get the town looking good. Everyone on there looks like a day, but they ain't the best ones there. They work hard then. And I want to keep the economy going and maintain the street police departments. I want a safe place for our kids and grandkids to be raised. This is rich and everybody was about the drugs and everything. We need more people. We need to work with uh, people outside the area and contact. So our police department does that. They uh, work for, uh, they work for several different states. But this time to grow and prosper. Because if Barbara prospers, we all want to prosper. I've been on working with the entire city council and decisions for the uh, future of the city. I want to say you can answer me for it. There are hundreds of grants out there that uh, the right grant writer can get so the city can have uh, what it needs. The future of Barbara depends. What the Leaders of our community does today and in the future. Thank you, and I hope to see y'all at the voting precincts. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for coming. Uh, Debbie Payne, 30 year teacher. I don't think I've ever heard a good about you. One of the best teachers out there in GR Hampton. And, and just an exceptional teacher. And it's just good to sit up on the panel with you and the rest of you, Mike. We have a disaster in the county. He was our emergency man, and he went to many disasters in this county. I watched him. I watched him work. Bill, I'm trading cattle with you. Bought you corn. Bought hay off of you. You're a good PBA. Mike Warren. Mike Warren used to live in the house I was born and raised in. And I know he's a smart man. Uh, Mayor Thompson's not here, but I call the mayor all the time. City stuff. And Sherman, 22 years ago, when I was a runner, you come by and you said, Jim, the police department needs some stuff down there. And I think the Coast Service Tank, we got you some guns and some, and some cars and worked well with you. And then down at the baseball field, this fellow shows up, Bob Lett. And I, I, was, uh, I was watching the game, and, and I was up in the woods, and I said, Who is that big boy coming to bat? And they said, That's Bob Lett. That's my son. I, and I was going to catch him at 5'10". That first pitch, you get it over the fence, and that's the first home run I ever seen leave the field at Knox Central. Bob Levin was hitting on the the side of him. Young man running for PBA, and he's thinking I'm going to do a good job. But I'll just tell you what. Uh, I, I, I work on the roads in this county, uh, build bridges, We've got funding for bridges, the water. Turning lanes in the last 22 years, if they came up on the Cumberland Gap Parkway, they just didn't give them those because they like people in Knox County. They hate building a turning lane in Knox County. 
uh, out of my wife coming to Gavin Parkway for the safety of her children. And uh, I've worked with four county judges, two Democrats, and two Republicans. This race will break the tie. And also, I've worked with four governors, two Democrats, and two Republicans. Come next year, if I'm elected, that will break the tie. But I just want to ask for the people's vote and thank you for filming everything today. And I think I've still got the experience, and I still hope I've got your trust. Thank you, it's good to be here tonight. Thank you, women, for the fine job they did. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Again, I'm Bob Levins. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. <coughs> Lots of luck to thank Bill. Uh, it's been a clean race so far. I do not hear me say anything bad about Bill. I was a little boy. But uh, there was a lot of, there's a couple of tax questions geared toward me and Bill. I don't really feel like a, I'm not sure why everybody feels like the BBA is the one that, you know, moderates their, I mean, I don't, we don't set tax rates or anything. I'm not sure why it's thought about. But, and I don't think higher taxes is always the end all beat off or anything that's wrong. I think everything needs a closer look at a lot of times. But uh, I'd like to ask for your vote consideration as well. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm going to try to, uh, Use my time here to clean up some of my earlier answers. Uh, the last question was concerning my experiences. Um, and I got so far as to tell you about getting jobs in our region, and I've got experience in doing that. We also have a tremendous problem in our county right now with, with the uh, drug epidemic. Uh, we don't, if we don't fight back, if we don't do something, again, we're going to wither up and uh, on the line and die. We've got a new jail opening in the spring of uh, 2019. Uh, it's a much needed facility. We've, uh, we've been overcrowded for a long, long time. One of the things I would like to do with that new jail, with the cooperation of the local jailer and the local district judges, I'd like to implement a program where nonviolent drug offenders can have the option of going to jail or going to rehab. We have a facility large enough to actually house a rehab facility inside the jail. Now, uh, my experiences, I've spent uh, 13, 14 years as a, a substance abuse counselor. I'm not an expert on it, but I do understand it. I know what we're up against. I know it is a, uh, at least I subscribe to the theory that it's a, uh, a disease and it can be treated. So uh, it's a win-win for us. We can, we can rehab people cheaper than we can incarcerate them, and we may be saving lives. It goes hand in hand with the jobs that we need to bring in. We need to give our young people some hope, some opportunity for the future, rather than this feeling of despair. Third thing I want to touch upon is the waste, or the, the past waste of tax dollars in our county. We're not very efficient. Uh, we, we operate on the, kind of on the shoestring, and uh, we hire more work to be done by outsiders than we do uh, ourselves, and it makes absolutely no sense. But if you're here tonight and you're, you uh, live in Knox County and you love Knox County, you know what the situation is. We're farming out jobs every day. We're passing money out every day to somebody rather than doing it ourselves. And every time we do that, we're wasting about 30 or 40 percent of that money. All things being equal, I believe that I am the most qualified person for the job. Um, big business, Knox County is big business. We deal with a budget of uh, several million dollars each year. Uh, I have a degree. Uh, I actually have a double major in business and accounting. So I can at least read the balance sheet. I know what we're talking about when it comes to wins and losses. Uh, most importantly, you know, we are involved in legal issues because county business, that kind of money is big businesses. We're always in litigation. I have a lot of right? Thank you, sir. Awesome. Let me <clears throat> reiterate, we have been doing a good job in our office. We've been doing such a good job that 
about now for about the last five years, we couldn't get the tax bill out about 45 days earlier than what prior administrations used to get them out of here. So we're getting them out in a timely manner, whereby you have enough time to pay for it. Because I don't care how much money you got, you got to come up with $1,500 all at one time, that's an issue. Okay? So we're trying to get them out early for you, for your benefit. Also, let me also say that in closing, I believe we live in the greatest country in the world. I also believe that we live in the best state, the best county in the United States. And the reason I say this is we are a government of the people, by the people, for the people. Our form of government here in this United States is the envy of every other country. Former President Franklin Roosevelt stated, the people are the only threat to our democratic form of government in that they won't go to the polls and vote. On November the 6th, all across the United States, people will be asked to go to the polls Vote for U.S. Senators, U.S. Congressmen, Governors, State Senators, State Representatives, State Constitutional Amendment Issues, as well as offices of local city and county government. In those races, those elected will have to work together to move Knox County forward, move the state forward, move the federal government. Choose wisely. I plead here tonight that if we elect, I will work to the utmost of my ability with every county official, every local city official, and every corporate city official to move forward and do the best job possible for you, the taxpayer. Thank you very much again. Just keep Bill Oxendine as an outstanding PPA. Thank you, sir. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and having a
um, one of the things that, that I have a plan in my head for is, is actually working with our local leaders and developing some type of an industrial plan that works toward building infrastructure we need and attracting the businesses we need. We need someone who actually goes out to these conferences and talks to the two different companies that are looking to expand in the new areas. So that, that's something that we need to add. We need someone who, who actually works to promote the good things here. That, that we, need, we need a person who, we should be celebrating what our schools do, do good back here. We would is one of the, in the top 10% of the elementary schools in the state right now. And I had heard about it. We have four schools in Knox County that move in the top 100 schools across the Commonwealth. Out of 640 something schools, I think that's a pretty good achievement. And we should be talking about it. We should be putting it out there so people know it. And one of the things that I, I really need from you all is I, can, I can't do the job of being a state representative unless I know what you want me to do. One of the things I have on my website is a place of comments. It's Debbie Payne on it. If you all would go, actually go to the website, look over the issues, tell me what you think needs work on. That's something that I would have to know from the public. And I look around, I see what I want to do. I need you to tell me what you want me to do. And if anybody wants to talk to me, my phone number's in the book. It's Gary and Debbie Payne. I would appreciate your vote. And I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes tonight's forum. Appreciate you all coming out again and spending your time with us this evening. It has been mentioned several times. I hope all of you all will please take time to vote on November 6th. Candidates, again, thank you all for your time. And we wish you nothing but the best of luck. We are next